Well, hey, this tool right here is probably the most misused tool in the whole drywaller's toolbox. I'm gonna explain that in a minute. Okay, one of the things that got me into putting out YouTube videos was watching some of the videos out there. And I often was seeing what I could tell was amateurs trying to teach other amateurs. Which in drywall, I think that's really a bad idea because there's a lot more to it than just smearing it on the wall and sanding it smooth. I see that so often and often you end up with work like some of these examples. So I decided I'm going to... Put out videos that's going to teach you guys the right way and one of the things is the right way to use this tool and the wrong way so this tool is actually probably my favorite tool i carry it in my back pocket most of the time you walk around just sticking it back here in your waistband and it's a multi um, functional tool it does a lot so it is a great tool but there's certain things you shouldn't do with it so first, let me go over some of the things that it's intended for. Let's first notice this shape right here. You notice how it comes over and it forms a 90. That 90 goes down to about right there and then it starts curving under. Well, that makes it very handy for getting into corners. So let's just say I wanted to clean tape in this corner or do whatever in this corner. Well, you see how that 90 just fits and it goes over and wipes off the mud on this side. If you wanna see how I coat angles like that, I've got a video about that. It shows it a little more in detail, but that's why that's made that way. You don't want one like this one that I have that has really deep here, and you don't want one that takes off and just starts curving in right away. And there are some that do that, but even this cheap knife I've got here, it's still got that perfect shape. Okay, the other thing that this is great for is taping. This is basically a taping knife, not a floating finishing knife. So like you want to put some mud on, put your tape in, and tape it. Well, it's just the right size. It's great for spreading mud and getting that first initial little coat of mud on it like six inches wide that's if you're doing a recess joint that's all you want right there just six inches wide now it's not for floating that out I'm gonna show you that here in a second so see this knife let's say you were trying to spread mud with this knife for taping well it's pretty awkward I can do it I would recommend that you don't because that's why we have all these different knives but if you wanted to could load up some mud here and still spread it out like that for taping purposes but this knife feels better it's easier to maneuver and it does the same thing you just load it up you put it on here at an angle lean it over as you go up and push and that quick you spread it out now you could lay your tape into that wipe it down and bed it so it's great for that well the other thing it's good for is when you're trying to coat the screws be sure to click that show more below this video or the down arrow for a lot more good information so this is just my mock-up so let's say these were the screws on the wall well an easy way to coat it is to slide spot it now the way the simplest way for you guys would be this way i'm going to show you how to do all three at once because it's just much easier it's that same technique Put it on here as you go up lean it over and push so once you get this down you can do it like you can sit here and coat the screws in your room in a hurry this little knife is real handy for that okay it's also good because if you get a good quality one they have a hammer end on them so that's a metal end and it's great for let's say you go to coat this and that one's sticking out just a tad won't drive it real far with this but you can take this and 
drive in that spot a little bit or let's say you miss sometime you put a screw here and you miss a little bit when you pull it out it leaves this little dimple sticking out and you can't just coat it so you want to just take and tap that in now it's recessed you can coat it it's also good for at the end of the day having a little bit of fun let's say you just want to st stick your knife you can stick it in by throwing it <laughs> okay it's also really good for scraping you find chunks of mud it scrapes really good now these blades get really sharp so a lot of times when i'm stringing out a bunch of masking paper i will do this Let's see if i can usually you can cut your plastic with this because these get honed from doing that so it's kind of like a razor or a leather strop it usually works better when the box isn't falling apart like this so cut it over here for example you just need to cut a piece instead of having to run chase your utility knife down so it'll cut plastic so of course it's great for taping angles it's great for hand coating those same angles when you want to get just one side coated but here's where so many go wrong so many of the videos i see now if you're a pro you can make this work decently but i kind of say why if you got the right tools if you're a pro you're going to have the right tools so why not do it right so let's just say we did tape this so you can see we put some mesh tape down here now it's ready to coat it so here's where I see it go wrong so often is you guys put this mud on and you figure just put it on fairly crude and then sand it down so you try and work it a little bit and, and it's just not coming out and I just literally see examples almost like that where it's almost that that course well let me show you how using the right tool can make all the difference this is not for floating in this case we want to float this so i'm just going to get out this 12 inch knife first thing you want to do is feather out this outside edge and i see the tape went a little further so i'm going to extend that a little more and then you put your knife up here lay it down fairly steep where you're you're kind of close to dragging your knuckles in the mud push fairly firmly and then just pull and you see that quick and simple it smooths it right out you don't have all that mess that you had and we put it on just thick enough to cover the mesh tape it's still showing through just a little bit there and that's okay because we're going to put another coat of mud on this but if i wanted it a little bit heavier can i do that with that same technique there same thing we put it just a little bit heavier you don't you don't ever want it too thick because doing it this way is how you end up with this you don't want that big hump the other problem with trying to use this is if you were coating just that mesh tape which goes like this right now just to outline it you want to coat at least this far out you, you have to extend it out to get this gentle hump it's gonna have a hump you just don't want that abrupt hump so you don't want this where it just goes like suddenly you want this hump that goes real gradual and that allows the light to not cast a shadow and not give it away so in this case mesh tape minimum width we want is basically about 10 or 12 inches and does a whole lot better so i would suggest not floating out anything you can tape your joints with this but don't float them out with this as a pro we sometimes do but it's to keep it simpler for you guys if you're going to tape recessed joints use a 10 inch on the first coat and then a 12 inch on the second coat we can sometimes get by with an 8 and then a 10. If you're doing butt joints i did a video on that just a little bit ago that's a whole different story it needs to be coated way wider and that's where this would never ever get the job done right 
I hope that helps you out. And if it did, be sure and subscribe to our videos so that you get notified of other tips and tricks like this. And click that bell icon, of course. Give us a thumbs up and comment. In order to support our channel and keep our channel going, we rely on all that. And there's a section down in the description down below where it'll show you how you can support our channel uh, by giving back some financially if we've helped save you money. I hope to save you hundreds and even thousands. And if I did, I would love to hear about it. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. So take care, everybody.